In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a vintage video game title screen. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dreadlabs and I'm a visual artist and graphic designer. And in today's video, I wanna showcase a really easy method in order to turn your normal graphics into these graphics that look like they've been displayed in a retro video game in the 80s. So the concept that we'll be talking about in this video is called dithering. And although you can dither stuff in software such as Photoshop, which I'm also gonna showcase in this video, I will also be showcasing a new tool called Ditherboy, which is standalone software made by my good friend Jack from Studio AAA. You can run Ditherboy without the need of having any design software whatsoever, so that's really convenient. It does, however, cost money, and that's why I also wanna showcase how to do this in Photoshop. That being said, it's a lot quicker to do this in Ditherboy. The process in Photoshop isn't necessarily hard to do, but it's just really, really slow. Without any further ado, let's dive straight into the tutorial. So we're here in Adobe Photoshop, and I just made this very simple gradient medieval type. We have two strokes in a gradient overlay. So let me just go over them one by one. It's basically white text, and the font is called Sabbath Black OT. It's available on Adobe Fonts, if I'm not mistaken. And the gradient overlay just adds a little bit of shadow at the top. The first stroke adds in a really thick white stroke around the text. And then the second stroke adds a smaller black stroke in between that on the top. Then I just make this layer invisible and I export it as a PNG file so it's transparent. So this is Ditterboy. At the top right here, I'm gonna click on import and import the image that I made, which is over here. And you'll get a weird little uh, thing here and that's because we don't have any processing on this so we're going to click on the Floyd Steinberg style these are all different types of algorithms that dither your designs so as you can see this is what it looks like and it already has that really cool vintage feel and in the recent update of Ditherboy Ditherboy 4.0 you can actually also add color to this so let's go to the retro palette category and click on the handheld category and as you can see it immediately looks like it's been made on a Game Boy Color. You can also add in depth to add more color and add more shades basically. You can also blur the design a little bit but in our case that's not really necessary. I just want to showcase a cool way to actually do this and animate it. So we're going to open up After Effects. I'm going to import my base art. I'm going to make a new composition with it. I'm actually going to Turn off the transparency grid here. Let's open up the composition settings by pressing Ctrl or Command K on my keyboard. I just want to have this at 12 frames per second because these animations usually don't have that high of a frame rate. The duration has to be two seconds. Then I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to go to Layer, Layer Styles, Outer Glow. And this will open up the Outer Glow menu over here. I'm going to click on this drop down menu. Turn the outer glow into white, turn the blend mode into normal, and I think the opacity we can just leave that at 75%. And for now, maybe let's make it 25 pixels in size. I'm gonna click on the stopwatch here to animate it, and on the one second mark, I'm gonna make this 100, and then on the last frame, I'm gonna make it 25 again. And now you should have something like this. I just want to have a little bit of easing on these so I'm going to select all of the anchor points by clicking on the size here and now I'm going to just press the F9 button on my keyboard which that makes this easy ease basically and now there's a little bit of easing. So now all you need to do is go to file, export, add to media encoder queue and you basically just want to export these as JPEG files. So the way you do that is let's just wait for this screen to pop up. Now I just want to click on where you want the folder to be. So I'm just going to go and put it in here. You want to just make sure that it's set to JPEG because this will render each frame as an individual JPEG file. And then we'll just click on this play button and this will render out every single frame. And if we open up this folder in a minute, it should be added up to 24 frames, if I'm not mistaken. And there we go. Let's go back to Ditterboy and import that very first frame over here. This one under the retro. Let's go back to simple for the palettes and we'll just leave this at none, I think. And we just can add a little bit more depth to add more colors. And I think a depth of four is actually nice enough. This gives you that glow effect, actually. 
Uh, we can also play around with the contrast if we want to, but to be honest, in this case, actually, I've played around with it. I don't think that it's actually necessary to play around with these settings. We'll do that in another video. Now, of course, we need to export this and we also need to export all of the other frames. And we can actually luckily do that with the batch export. So let's click on batch at the top left here. Click on select folder. I'll go to the folder with the base art and we'll just select this folder. And you cannot really read it, but it just asks that like it's going to export every single frame in here that has the exact same name. So is it if it's exported as a sequence, so for example, base art 1, base art 2, base art 3, etc., then it will just export all of those one all together. We'll just click on yes. Now it's doing the batch processing, which is actually going fairly fast, as you can see. And it's complete. Now let's open up the folder again and we can see a folder called batch processed. And as you can see, if we just play through the frames really fast, you can see that it's exported all of these in the dither style. And let's go back to After Effects or Photoshop or whatever software you'd like. You can also do this in Photoshop, by the way. Let's import the processed batch here and we'll just right click and click on interpret footage. Click on main and make this 12 frames per second here. And now we'll click on new come from selection. And there we have it. We can also basically just color this if we want to by clicking on a toner. We'll just drop in the toner effect on here. And let's make this like bright red maybe. And we'll just click on the highlights and make those yellow. And now you get that cool fiery look with an orange in between, essentially giving you a retro video game type that's animated. All right, like I said, I'm gonna show you how to do this in Photoshop as well. All you need to do in Photoshop is basically make a new document. We don't need an artboard for this. We can also just drop in the dither files one by one. Let's go to window, open up timeline, click on create frame animation. And we'll just click on the eye at the bottom here, but we're gonna hold alter option on our keyboard, which only makes the zero one visible. And now we'll click on the next one and we'll just do this until we have every single one. And there we go. And now if we play this, we have the same effect, but with Dither Boy, of course. So let's say that you don't want to get Dither Boy for yourself. I'm just going to show you how harsh it is to do this kind of art in Photoshop alone, because you're going to need the bitmap processing. And that's just something that Photoshop doesn't really do that much with. It's a really fairly old feature. Uh, that's why there's that many plugins for this kind of stuff out there. But just for the sake of this, showing you why I use Dither Boy for this, because this is not a sponsored video. I'm not getting paid to do this. Full disclosure, I got Dither Boy for free by from Jack as a gift. But other than that, I decided to do tutorials with this software completely by myself. Check hasn't asked me to do this in any way whatsoever. It's just that I just want to show you how easy it is to create cool art using Dither Boy and how hard it is to do this in Photoshop, I guess. Let me just show you how this works in Adobe Photoshop. And just for the sake of time, I'm just going to make a still image just to showcase how harsh this is. So let's just also add the outer glow here. So we'll do 75 and I think this is fine. So the first thing you want to do is go to image mode and turn this into a black and white image by clicking on grayscale. And this asks you to merge the image. So let's just say, well, don't, we don't want to merge it because we also want to change that outer glow completely. Now the next part that you want to do is click on mode bitmap. And this asks you to flatten the layers and there's basically no option to not do this. So we'll just do that. And now the method, uh, we can use diffusion dither. That's the only dither pattern that we have here. And the only other option that we have here, let's just click on okay now. And now it's dither. It's really, really dither. Like as you can, if you zoom in, you can see it. But as you can see, it's really, really small. So let's just say that we wanna have it a little bit smaller, uh, just like in dither boy. What you can do is basically, We'll just do 36, so half of the 72 pixels per inch and click on OK. And now our image is also smaller. So now what we can do is basically go back to image size, make our image larger again, and just make sure that your resample is set to nearest neighbor because this stops the anti-aliasing from happening. And that's basically all you can do in here. So let's go back again with Ctrl Z. This is all non-procedural as you can see because this flattens the image completely. Let's just do 18 and we'll scale this back up with the image size times four. And now we get something similar to what we had in Ditter Boy. But as you can see, it's two colors. So before we prep our logo in Photoshop, 
we essentially need to make multiple light layers that we have to dither separately every single time which is a pain let's just say that we want to have this one as the most brightest color so i'm going to make a new file and just paste this one in there and i'm going to go back all the way and let's just say i'm just going to do this the easy way and make it darker with a curves something like this i guess and then let's go back to mode and it's also not possible to do this so we have to now flatten the image and now we can go to image uh, mode bitmap and we'll go again to the diffusion dither and we will be going to make it larger again with the image size so times four and we'll copy this i will paste this over here let me just show you okay i'm gonna make use the magic wand and i'm gonna check off anti-aliasing and click off contiguous and we'll click on the black here I will just delete that and we now basically have only the white parts of that layer so we'll make that yellow with a color overlay which is not possible because our image is set to black and white so we have to go back to image mode and we'll turn this back to rgb color don't merge color overlay yellow and just make a black background and we're going to do the same thing for the second layer here so color overlay but we'll make this red and there we go now we have something similar but this set is just one frame and it's not even like that perfect because you have to just go back and change so many different settings. And in Dither Boy, you can actually just also change the Dither algorithm to something different if you'd like. As you can see right here, you can also change the style of the Dither. So for example, you can just scale this thing down. Uh, let's go back to Floyd Steinberg so I can actually show you. So if we lower the scale, as you can see, the pixel is gonna get smaller, but we can also make it a lot larger to make it like really, really lo-fi. So yeah, I highly just encourage you to save yourself that precious time, especially if you do this stuff kind of stuff for client work. I already used Dither Boy in a client video, uh, which was a lyric video and it had to have frames, I think uh, animations of these Dither patterns for like 12 seconds. Imagine if I had to do that in Photoshop alone. That's just, I'm not even sure how to do that because I can't charge my client like an extra 2000 euros just for those 40 hours being stuck in Photoshop trying to did her stuff. So yeah, I highly recommend just saving yourself your precious time speed up your creation process and just get Dither Boy if you're interested in this kind of software. So yeah guys, I hope I showed you something new today. I hope I inspired you to start creating your own retro video game typography or any other cool stuff using Dither Boy of course. Uh, that being said, even if you just don't like Dither Boy and you just want to do this kind of stuff in Photoshop, it's also completely fine, of course. And whether you want to use Dither Boy or Photoshop, I can't wait to see what you create using this tutorial. So if you want to share that with me, be sure to tag me on Instagram or send it to me on my Discord server, the link for which is down below. And while you're at it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already, because at this point, I think we're nearing 200 tutorials on my YouTube channel. And there's, of course, a lot more coming, so if you don't want to miss any any of those please subscribe to the channel or check out my website where you can easily filter through my tutorials by software or by design style so with all of that being said thank you so much for watching this is tom from dreadlabs tuning out and i hopefully see you guys in the next video